you know, in a kind of a colloquial way, I used to always say to my clients that they should focus on nutrition first and then worry about exercise. And the reason that I generally had said that was because a larger percentage of your results probably come from the kitchen and what you put in your body than the small effect you're getting from working out. You know, and I just kind of said that casually, but now there's some really interesting physiological backing to that. Okay, when you're overweight and you have a higher degree of insulin resistance, it turns out that you have a different result from exercise. Now, this isn't to say that exercise is bad, but it's to break down a brand new study, May 2020, in the journal Cell, that can help, I don't know, shed some light on the overall big picture of things. Now, this explains a lot to me because I was 285 pounds at one point and it made it very difficult for me to lose weight when I would just exercise. I wasn't, wasn't having anything happen. In fact, I just felt like garbage. And then when clients would come to me that were overweight and they would say, when I work out, I just feel worse and it's not having an effect, I'm not losing weight. I could relate to them, but I didn't have a physiological answer. I didn't have a biochemical response as to what, what's happening. Now I'm getting a little bit more of an indicator. Anyhow, we're going to dive into this, but first, please do hit that red subscribe button. And then if you can, hit the little bell icon, select where it says all notifications, and please turn that on because that's going to make it so you always get a notification whenever I'm posting a brand spanking new video every day. After this video, go ahead and check out Yuhito Matcha down below too. These guys are amazing. They are the matcha experts, 180 year old Japanese matcha company. So if you're into green tea, this is the jam. It's what I use when I'm fasting, when I'm doing low carb, I use it as a pre-workout, an intra-workout. Highly recommend you check them out and they're a big supporter of this channel. So link down below in the description. So this journal cell study found that insulin resistance blocks the effect of exercise. Now insulin resistance is when your body isn't responding to insulin, right? You eat carbohydrates and just nothing happens. Insulin isn't really released. It's pre-diabetes really, and diabetes in essence. Okay, what this study did is it took a look at 36 participants with varying degrees of insulin resistance and it had them exercise. Okay, and what they did is they measured a bunch of blood markers prior to exercise and after exercise. But they weren't just doing regular lab tests, they were doing all kinds of multi-omic testing, which means they were looking at uh, metabolomes, proteomes, they were looking at so many different genetic factors and really getting granular with what's happening. So the results were pretty fascinating, or actually really fascinating. They found that most of the cellular responses to exercise that would normally be extremely healthy responses were either totally quelled or even reversed. And what that means is that if you were to take a healthy person and have them exercise, they would get all these positive responses at a genetic level. They'd get these different protein pathways that would be activated and be a healthy thing. With people that were insulin resistant, they either didn't have those effects or they actually had the opposite effect, meaning the exercise actually hurt them from a metabolic standpoint, which is wild. Well, you have to look at the equation, right? Okay, insulin resistance is metabolic dysfunction. It means your metabolism is dysfunctional. So you can't exactly expect a dysfunctional metabolism to respond to exercise in a functional way. A perfect analogy is if you walk up to someone on the street and they're a dysfunctional person and you go to shake their hand and say hi, they're bound to just totally go crazy on you and just react in a weird way, right? You're trying to be polite and they just lose their mind because they're dysfunctional, right? Okay, well that's exactly what's happening inside your body. We can't expect a dysfunctional body with insulin resistance to respond to exercise in a functional way. So it just reinforces focus on your diet first and fix the insulin resistance, otherwise the exercise might be a problem. But this is not to say that you shouldn't exercise. You still get the caloric burn benefit, which ultimately can help out with insulin resistance. But let's look a little bit more at the data with the study, just because well, for nerd's sake it's fun, but it's also cool and applicable. There was one thing in particular that's known as the fitness inflammatory signature. This is a response in inflammation, uh, generally interleukin 1,5, that's heightened after a workout, usually like 15 minutes after a workout. This is a normal response and it's the body's uh, way of starting recovery, okay? Well, this response was totally quelled in people that were insulin resistant. They just didn't have an inflammatory response, which sounds good, but it was actually bad. It means they didn't, their bodies didn't initiate recovery. They said, oh, you worked out? Thanks. That's it. But what really gets wild is 30% of the proteins and 10% of the metabolites that are involved in just healthy processes actually diverged in other directions. So it's not like there was just a lack of response. Some overall healthy responses to exercise did the opposite, like actually made the person unhealthier 
did worse things, like the protein ubiquination pathway. This is a cellular cleanup process, very similar to autophagy, where cells go through and they clean up uh, old wasteful parts of them or, or just decrepit pieces of the cell that are no longer useful, okay? So usually when we work out, our bodies get efficient at cleaning this process up through the protein ubiquination pathway. Turns out, in insulin-resistant individuals, it did the opposite. It went the other way. It actually contributed to more waste, which explains why people that are overweight and insulin resistant, when they work out and they don't have a proper diet with it, they actually feel worse and sometimes gain more weight. The other thing that went down is omega-3 signaling, which has a big <laughs> process with inflammation. You don't have proper omega-3 signaling, well, then you're not signaling those nuclear factor kappa B, the NLRP3 inflammasome to suppress or be inhibited, and therefore inflammation just continues to skyrocket and that perpetuates and do the math. And then the other piece that was really interesting is when insulin resistant individuals work out, they have more insulin that's released. Well, there is even more insulin that gets released if you're more insulin resistant. Well, more insulin that gets released during a workout with someone that doesn't respond well to insulin is going to result in hypoglycemia. So have you ever wondered why if you're overweight, you go to a gym and you feel lightheaded when other people don't, it's not because you're just working too hard. There's a metabolic reason, and it's because you're responding in a kind of an inverse way to a normal, healthy person. So I have plenty of videos on my channel that talk about how to combat insulin resistance and things like that, but the focus is keeping carbohydrates a little bit lower, keeping the fats a little bit higher. Make that your focus first before going into aggressive exercise. It really is important if you want your metabolism to recover that you start with very basic low intensity exercise and focus on the diet for the first four to five months and then move into more aggressive exercise. Bite the urge to do that, okay? Do not do that even if you feel like you have the energy to do it. It could have a metabolic impact that sets you back even further. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. I'll see you tomorrow.